News, traffic, weather, Atlanta's morning show on AM 750 WSB. 27-13 to score. Michigan State uh, threatening once again. Michigan State now has 339 yards total offense. Georgia has 311. Georgia 217 passing, 94 on the ground. Michigan State 194 through the air, 145 on the ground. Michigan State has run the ball 40 times. They have thrown it 18 for 58 plays. Georgia has run the ball 24 times. They have thrown it 26 times. So Michigan State has run eight more plays in the ball game. However, they trail 27 to 13. And again, Georgia has thrown for 217. They have rushed for 94. And Michigan State has rushed it for 194, or rather 145, and they've thrown it for 194. So all kinds of passing yardage on this wild and crazy football game. Warren? I feel you have to hand it to that uh, wide receiver, rising number one. He really is an outstanding athlete. He plays point guard in basketball uh, for the Spartan basketball team, so that'll give you an idea of the exceptional athletic ability that he has. George has been playing very, very well, but they're giving up some uh, big plays here, and I think both the defense of George and the defense of Michigan State are tired, so it'll probably going to wind down to who does the best job with the offensive on the offensive side of the ball and who makes the least mistakes. So if they put points on the board here, Georgia's got to come back and answer it. Ryzen has caught passes tonight for 41 yards, 55, and now 53. Overall, he has six catches for 188 yards. That's one receiver. Now Michigan State on our 10 and a half first down. They could grind out a first down, a foot and a half outside the goal line. Let's see if they go power and run inside on us now. Two tight ends in. They go to the tail, they swing him out, and he's all the way to the threes or close to the left side with enough blocking. Carswell, Demetrius Douglas was there, Aaron Chubb was there. They quickly came out, not a real wide sweep, but they slanted it outside, and they'll mark him on the three. He got seven yards in the first shot. State trying to cut it down to a seven-point game, or if they would go for two, they'd cut it to six. 14-34, dogs had him out of it, really had him out of it at one time, 24-7. We're in a seven-man line. Toss sweep, easy or big hole, easy touchdown. They ran to the one side of that big giant, and boy, they blew a hole in there and scored, and it's 27 to 19. Ezor just shot in there for three yards. We got a long, long way to go on this, 27 to 19. That'll key the Spartans up again. They ran outside the big guy, and then they ran inside the big guy. And I'm talking about Mandridge, supposedly a number one or number two draft in the NFL coming up next spring. 27-19, Dogs defense could finally be getting tired because it's not only small, there are no subs, remember. Ryan Lowe to try an extra point. It's an eight-point game. He missed one tonight. The snap or the hold, however, may have had something to do with it. They set it down, and the kick is good, and it's 27 to 20. 14 to 24, you got all night to play. Timeout, 60-second network break on the Bulldog Network. Here comes the Zotty that will live up to your dreams. AM 750 WSB, Sky Copter and Sky Plane, twice the coverage. 14 minutes and 24 seconds left to go in this football game. It is 27 to 20, and there have been so many big plays, it's just amazing. The passing attack has been uh, unbelievable on both sides of the line of scrimmage as Michigan State has now uh, thrown for 194 yards and Georgia's thrown for 217. And this was a game that everybody thought was going to just be 
like two tanks out there running against each other all night, just marching up and down the field, and field position would be so important. But it has been the air arm of both teams that has certainly come to the front tonight, and uh, Georgia, no doubt, will go back to the air. There's still plenty of time in this football game. It is far from over as Michigan State has been able to come back. And meanwhile, Blake Ezor is having an unbelievable game. He's now carried it 26 times for 117 yards. And Georgia doesn't even have that much as a team rushing the football. 27 to 20. There is a very distinct chance that our defensive front is wearing down. Remember, we came into this thing with no substitutes. And you just don't know what's going to happen the rest of this way. Though it's true what has really hurt us late in the third quarter were two bombs, one down the right side and one down the left. Hampton and Worley will be the deep backs. Chris Broom, a tight end, went back as Worley called him back to say something. You know, Larry, the, uh, the bomb is one thing that did not catch Georgia during the year. During the regular season, Georgia was very strong against the deep pass. Langlow will kick. Our deep men are not deep. They're on the 10-yard line, and this kick is high and short. Hampton on the 13, the 15, to the 20. Cuts inside to the 25. Spins out. They knock him out around the 29. Rodney Hampton. More than 14 minutes to play. And the way these two have been throwing the ball, who knows how long that's going to go. Chuck Bullo, a reserve linebacker. John Kippel, a reserve free safety with the men that hit him. First down, Georgia on their own 29. You know, we haven't seen our ground game all night because we've been a little too small to block them. You wonder if suddenly we'll come up with a long drive that way. 27-20, Georgia. Flip-flop. Tight end, Sadowski over to the right. State flip-flops your defense. They're in that 6-1 again. Fake play action. In trouble, Johnson throws over there on the left flank, complete to the 34-yard line of the receiver to the 39, and out of bounds. He had a dodge attacker who dove at his feet. He hit Kirk Warren of the tight end over on the left side. I think he got nine and a half. Let's see. Davis, a tackle, and Donaldson, a corner, got him. Wayne Johnson leaped in the air as the tackler dove at his feet behind the line. They're really breaking the blocking down. That ball is up on the 39, and it might be an inch or two shy, or is it? They're looking at it right there. Louis Phillips puts the glasses on it, says they're about 10 inches shy. 27 to 20. Ball on the 39. Were we lucky to get nine and a half yards out of that play? Because somebody broke off on a block and just about got Wayne eight or nine yards behind the line. He made a great fake initially on the play, but one man did not go for it, and then he really had to, to leap and uh, and let fly. So you're right, he made a, a great play after a, a very good fake, but one, one man stayed with him. He's done similar things like that tonight. We have two tight ends in there, and John Thomas, the only receiver, split right. Michigan State, since they've gone on that 6-1, they really bothered us. We go to the tail. Hampton jumped inside, and after going two and a half, they hit him and knocked him back, but it'll be a first down up around the 42. We jump Hampton, and we tried to run behind Anderson and Wheeler and before, right in the middle. Jenkins, a linebacker, and Ridgeway, a left tackle, stopped him, ball in the 42. First down, Georgia. 27-20 for the Dogs. They need to rest their defensive front and linebackers as much as they can. Sean Hummington on the flanker in. Kirk Warner, the other tight end, went out. And we are Hampton and Alfonso Ellis. The backs, we flip-flop again with a tight end. And again, they come up in that six fun. And here comes Wayne Johnson sprinting right with a couple blockers. He's going to run to the 40, to the 45, 50. Dives down around there, 47. Should have a first down where he dove. Alfonso Ellis led him around the corner, and Sadowski blocked on that corner, too. And that sweep from the Dogs, 42, apparently got to the state, 47 and a half. We gained 10 and a half first down as Wayne Johnson ran a big keeper with blocking. Georgia leading by seven little points, and I say little because look how easy it looked 15 minutes ago. Dogs just outside, barely outside the Michigan State 47. State right now in a five. They may shift in a moment if we do. And now again our tight end comes back, and now he goes in motion left. 
And we go to Hampton, who cuts in the middle. Five, eight, nine, almost ten. Hampton burst up the middle. We ran a little trap with the tail in there. Carlos Jenkins, the linebacker, got him, and Hampton was through for ten and a half or eleven. Somewhere in there, DeFore and Wheeler and Shelly Anderson with the key blocks on the trap. And Hampton got us a first down, and the dogs have driven down to the Michigan State 36. Hampton 27 to 20, Georgia. Hampton with six carries for 52 yards, and he is the leading rusher for Georgia in this football game. Dogs up to the line. Keith Henderson's back in at the full. We split two receivers wide and stayed in that 6-1 again. Wayne Johnson to the fullback. Henderson was tripped by one man. We ran a little trap in there. He got about three where he fell, or three and a half. Jason Ridgeway, the left tackle, flipped his legs up as he jumped in there. Tried to do a little quick hitter with a fullback. And from the 36, went to the 32 and a half. It's going to be second down, six and a half. Clock is taking a long time moving. 12, 18. Dogs have driven it down the field. It's 27, 20. Got a seven point lead. Put Arthur Marshall short, Thomas wide right, keeper, now a pitch, Hampton outside, five, ten, Hampton puts down, puts down. Little short sweep right, Hampton down the right side for six, seven yards, and slanted back to the middle and ran past everybody. Hampton, the kid from Texas, having a sensational night, and now that really helped. It's 33 to 20 with 11:58 to go. There was superior speed on that. Casey to try the extra point. Little toss sweep on an option as Wayne Johnson slid out to the right and pitched it back, and they set it down. And Casey kicks it good. And the Dogs lead 34 to 20. Timeout, 60 second network break on the Bulldog Network. And now, just for the fun of it, here's Whitney Houston for Diet Coke. <laughs> Dares challenge Napa Auto Parts Store. That's me, Smarty of Smarty Parts. Yes. Now what does Napa have that I don't have? Napa has 125,000 parts for everything, from motorcycles to cars to trucks and farm tractors. Napa has 125,000 parts? Yes. All different? Yes. And if Napa doesn't have it, they'll get it for you overnight. Hey, I can get parts at night. The next night? Nah, it might take six months. But one thing I guarantee. What's that? It will be at night. Oh, boy. I'll even come by your house at 2, 3 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Just where do you live? Nobody beats Napa. You have a dog. Atlanta's best local news on AM 750 WSB. Before the ball game, Furman Fisher said that he felt that the difference in this game could be Rodney Hampton. Yeah. He said that he could be the difference. What and you kind of thought, why Rodney Hampton? Well, he scored three touchdowns tonight. He's run the ball for 84 yards. He shot four passes for 70 yards. Three touchdowns in the football game. He is truly the Georgia hero at this point as the Dogs lead it. 34 to 20 now, and that was a very, very big touchdown for Georgia as they try to keep a little distance between themselves and the Spartans, who hit on a couple of bombs their last couple of series, and this has turned into a wild scoring affair, exactly what you did not expect out of yeah. these two football teams coming into this contest tonight. Supposed to have been a couple of off-tackle people, and uh, with an awful lot of defense. One was very famous for defense. The other one, well, they were both famous on the running game. 34 to 20, pause 10 seconds here now for station identification. Louis Phillips points out that Michigan State has put their star runner, Blake Ezor, in as one of the two deep men. They haven't been using him that way. Casey wants to kick off. Lauren, what do you got? 
Larry, uh, you can tell that the Michigan State defense is getting tired. And I think Georgia's is too, and that's why the running game has worked so well against Michigan State here all of a sudden. They're getting some tracks in there. Georgia's big problem is it's not getting a rush uh, because it's tired, and that leaves number one to cut it in front of you or go deep, and he's really caught Georgia deep a couple of times, and it's really hurt. So if they can find some way to get a little more rush or to contain number one, Ryzen, uh, and then maybe get the ball back and kill some clock, things would be, be a little easier. But I think it's still going to boil down to whether or not you can get points on the board every time you get the ball on offense. What a run by uh, Hampton oh, Blair yeah. as he made the touchdown. He, he was running in traffic, then he cut back against cut the back grain. To the left, yeah. And when he did that, he, when he went to the left, he kind of got the Michigan State defense turned around. Brilliant run by Hampton. Casey will kick off, and the stadium roars, and Casey kicks it long, hooking to the right. Caught two yards deep in the end zone. Courtney Hawkins going wide right across the 10-yard line. One man forces him to the 15 of the 18 and shoves him out. That was Norm Cowens, the linebacker. Hawkins just sprinted with it, got quickly to the 10, and then sprinted across field. Was finally out or between the 18 and 19. Now you got 11.51 to play, and that could be all night. Tomorrow you'll have seven bowl games. Six of them called as the so-called majors, really, but the Hall of Fame is also on tomorrow, and that's Syracuse and LSU, and that's intriguing also. 34 to 20, Georgia. Michigan State on the 18 and a half. Wide slot left. They're on a trap with a little Ezor and grabbed by Lovelace on the 21 or two. He got about three, but Lovelace stayed home on the draw and knocked him down. Actually grabbed him and kind of spun him around. He had trouble getting his hands on him. The play was about three as they spotted on the 22, second and seven. State needs two touchdowns to tie. Ball is across the 21 to the 21 and a half, but it's second down about seven and a half. Two wide outs with the eye. Their eye is offset. One back to the tailback's right and flag down and McAllister back, but there was movement there and it might be on State. State's right side of the line, I think, jumped. You have 11-13 to go. Michigan State should be penalized five. It was second down, seven and a half procedure penalty on State. And they bring it back to just outside the 16. And now they're second down and about 12 or so. Clock running a little over 11 minutes, 34 to 20. Dogs leading. State breaks that. Andre Rison way out to the left. Another receiver short right, and they bring him in motion to that wide side. Fake, running left, McAllister. Going to Rison and threw it over him out of bounds on the 34. Carswell covering. He threw it into his bench too high, incomplete third down. He didn't go all the way deep that time. He turned and cut back to the side, and he missed him. He just went striking for about 15, 20 yards or so. We just received a note where it says the most points in a bowl game since Georgia's first bowl game in 1942, a 40-26 to 26 victory over TCU in the Orange Bowl. I remember you. I mean, you yeah. sure you remember that game. No, well, I remember reading about that game. You know, you didn't always read first-grade books when you were in school. <laughs> Third down and 12. I with two wide outs. We're in a five-man line. Here's McAllister, and we reach. We miss him. He runs. Did he go across the line? He threw it out of bounds up around the 30. They're going to rule it a complete play on the 31. He scampered forward, but apparently didn't pass the line of scrimmage, and he hit a completion to Esau, the running back. Let's see. We're on the 31. No, it's Rison again. Andre Rison on the 31, and they got a first down. That guy's amazing right on the sidelines and that got them out of a hole they were third and 12 and they struck for about 14 or 15 on the corner and when he got away from our rush that they were shoving outwards by stepping in a little at all he almost ran across the line of scrimmage state fake to the tail McAllister rolls left cocks his arm fires complete we knock him down the fullback Montgomery he fumbled on the 40 it rolled back the dogs think they got the ball or will they blow it dead let's see on the 36th State's ball, we're covered by Vince Tate of the right guard. They hit the fullback, Lovelace and Cowens, and cracked him, and the ball squirted back. 
They didn't get as much in the pass, but they wound up with five yards, a second and five. State recovered a fumble that could have broken their back. 9.49 on the clock, running less than that now. 34 to 20. Michigan State, high, wide, slot, right. Dogs in a five-man line. They run a draw with Little Azor. He's coming wide to the left, 35-40. We run him out on the 43. Carswell ran him out. The kid from Walton bumped him high, but he got a first down. I think he got about seven. They run a delayed draw and run him naked off to one side or the other with no blocking. State is moving the ball, and that stopped the clock with 9.34. It's 34 to 20. Our defense is tired. I know theirs is too, but ours is on the field right now. And they lined up around the 19 or so, and now they have come out slowly so far, but they're sitting out there up on the 43 with the first down. They're in a five-man front. Toss sweep, coming wide, easy or real wide. Cuts back, 45, leaping up to the 47 or so. Looks like he got close to about four yards. He jumped over the blockers. Norm Cowens had come up and Ben Smith. And the ball is going to be on the 47. Got four, second and six. Michigan State moving. Lovely limping off. Wycliffe's had a great night at times against that giant, and Rob Wainwright with the bad knees, and he's too small, 6'4", 254. Been on both sides of the line, learning how to be a backup for a couple of years or three years. Second down, five and a half. Michigan State on their own 47. McAllister going to hand it to Ezor, and we jam him up. He went to the right, to the left side, or our right. Flag down late and catch the call now, and let's see if there's a penalty. Guthrie came up to help in the play. Mike Guthrie, who's up helping the defensive line inside, and Morris Lewis would catch a penalty here. Let's see. No, there's no penalty. No gain. Third down and five and a half. Michigan State up to the line. Dog stopped it dead on the right side. Rob Wainwright alternates and flops over to the left side. I'm trying to watch the subs. And I think I see uh, Lovelace. No, that's Guthrie back inside. McAllister passing complete to our 43. And we hit him on the 41. Chuck Carswell had to come up and hit him. Beasley was coming up later. He threw a perfect strike. He needed five, and he got about a dozen. First down just outside the 40. State's coming down the field. You're right. We're playing Mike Guthrie, 220 pounds inside, and Rob Wayne right inside. We're trying to rest some people. The clock is 8.01 running, and now it's going to be a little under 8 as they come up to the line. It's still 34 to 20. Georgia, Michigan State on the dogs. 40. Here comes McAllister sprinting to the right. Stops. Goes to the sideline. Complete in the 29. Down to the 25. That's Bernard Wilson, the substitute flanker, who went down and curled back and caught a 15-yarder. Demetrius Douglas got him and State is driving down the field, throwing the ball. Clock is 7.42. They stop it to move the chains. They'll mark it on the dogs. 25 and a half. Michigan State with a long drive here. Now the clock runs, but the lead is 14, 736, 34 to 20. State a wide slot to the left. They still haven't moved those chains for some reason, and now Georgia has called time. Timeout, 60-second local break on the Bulldog Network. Twelve new months lie ahead. Cooper Brothers wishes you a very happy and prosperous new year. If your plans call for tackling that home repair job you've been putting off, or perhaps remodeling your present home or building a new one, Cooper Brothers can help you score big on getting the right materials for the job. Why not start your new year with a visit to Cooper Brothers early this next week? Voice of the South, AM 750 WSB. 
Michigan State got their uh, ground attack going, and now they're back to the uh, aerial game once again. They've now thrown Larry for 241 yards, and uh, meanwhile, the, the big man, Ryzen, who continues to catch those bombs, has got seven passes for 203 yards. They're running Blake Ezor constantly. He's now carried it 30 times in the game for 132 yards. Michigan State has 410 yards total offense. What do we have? 382. Pledge ass. How much we got passing? We have passing 226 yards. Johnson is 15 out of 27. We have 156 yards uh, on the ground. Georgia's only run the ball 29 times. Michigan State has run it 46 times in the football game. I'm glad you got that calculator. Ten years from now, when you're 75, and we have to bring somebody else in, I hope they bring a calculator with Ten them. Ten years from now, I'll be yeah. 75. Yeah, but How do you right. get that? I don't care if you're that old. 34 to 20 with 732 to go. Well, you're bad with numbers. Clock. That's too much time. We got half half of a quarter to go, which should take on your watch with all the passing. About, I'm guessing, 18 minutes to play 732. <laughs> now let's see. Here's State now in the eye with Ezor. Deep dogs have in a 4-2. They go to Ezor. Hole at the left tackle behind the big guy, and he got six right in there. Terry Webster, one of the men that knock him down. They ran behind that big giant Mandarich. The few little subs that we have, we just took Bell, the walk-on guy, off again, and now we took Mike Guthrie out of that line again. He's a linebacker, as you know. Ball on the 19, and now it's second and four. Michigan State knocking on the door. They're 14 down. They're in an eye with two wide outs, dogs. Three men down, a man standing in each corner. They bring a flanker in motion. Ezor drives inside the big man and got two and a half. Giles and Douglas and Webster stop him in there. On the bottom, how off the Barry who grabbed it, his leg ball on the 17. Look at Michigan State, knock on the door, third and two. They need two touchdowns. On the 17, third and only two, and the clock won't move fast enough. 629, they break. Andre Rison wide out to the right, the only flanker. They're going with two tight ends, they're in an eye. Dogs are in a six. McAllister Howering possibly an audible. McAllister gives it. Coming wide, Reeser got a first down, I think, to the 13 and a half. They swept Blake Reeser wide right, and then he slanted in, and I think he got three or three and a half. He got inside the 14. Ben Smith, the corner, Demetrius Douglas, who's really been playing a long time on defense tonight, stopped him. It's first down, Michigan State. They have to stop the clock to move the chains. Ball inside the 14 by seven, eight inches or so. Now the clock runs 6.02, and now it's less than that. 5.59, the clock running. State needs two touchdowns. 34.20, they're in an eye. One flanker, they're just running it at us. Fake, bootleg, he dropped the ball. The quarterback dives on it back around the 24. On a bootleg as Aaron Chubb, however, saw it and was blowing in the only man who had a chance to get him. The Kalisher bootleg to sneak right. Chubb saw that and stayed home and started at him, and he dropped the ball off his hip and stayed at tough luck and lost 10 big yards on a drop bootleg sneak to the right, out to the 24, second down, and the clock is running, 34 to 20. They interchange with one of the flankers. They brought Willie Boyer back in with a recent and slot left now. And here comes McAllister sprinting left, looking, looking, stops. We're going to chase him back the other way. One man missed him. He throws. Cut. No. Out of bounds on about the six. Rich Gavshevitz caught a ball, the first one tonight. He circled back after McAllister sprinted. Watch a holding penalty on Michigan State, and that's going to really hold him. Gavshevitz was knocked out on the six. He caught a ball open and went out. They pitched it about 19 yards, but there might be a holding penalty coming up on Michigan State. They had been second and 20. They took it all the way to the six and a half with the completion, and we only had one man to cover him on the scramble, and now a penalty on Michigan State with five minutes to go. Warren, what do you got? Well, they got the big man for holding again. Uh, Larry, he's had a couple of uh, penalties tonight. And uh, you could see the official called it real quick. And uh, what the, everybody on the sideline was hoping for was that uh, the defense could chase him down deep. And then, uh, you know, you wouldn't have to take the penalty. He'd give up the down instead. 
second down and 30. Michigan State pushed back to the 34. The penalty may really have hurt him. We're in a 5-2. One of the corners up close. Here comes McAllister. We're going to chase him way back, and we knock him down on the 50. Richard Curtis knocked him down back out around the 50. Lewis was also chasing him. A real sack. Mike Guthrie, one of the little people, forced to play a down lineman tonight. Also in there with pressure. And State, and the penalty had an awful lot to do with it, has gone back another 15 yards all the way to the 50. The clock is 420. We got a piece of lady luck there. 34 to 20. Dogs leading in State lines up now on their own 49. And their third down and I guess 40 yards or something. The clock is back. Stop. Gonna throw that long bomb again, and it is touchdown. Reeson caught it between two defensive backs. We had him totally covered, and he threw a beautiful, perfect strike to Andre Reeson. Andre Reeson of Flint, Michigan, caught a 50-yard bomb and stayed back in the ball game when the Dogs fought with the help of the penalty and the two sacks and a drop ball. They had shoved him back 46 yards, and they threw a bomb. Now it's an eight-point game, and there's enough time. 349, it's 34 to 26. Boy, did he make a catch. And a man in front and a man behind running with him, but they couldn't turn around and look at him. Lying low to try an extra point. And they set it down, and he sticks it up good, and it's 34 to 27, 349 to go. Hang on here, timeout, 60-second local break on the Bulldog Network. Some teams win every year, like the one performing for you at Mitchell Motors on H3 Industrial Boulevard in Chambly. No wonder Georgia's oldest Oldsmobile dealer specializes in low prices, high trade allowances, and top service on the best in family cars, luxury cars, all models from the new generation of Oldsmobile. If picking winners is your style, Mitchell is your dealer. Join all the fans at Mitchell Motors, H3 Industrial Boulevard, just inside the perimeter. Newt Rockney, Jim Thorpe, Red Grange, Kuppenheimer. Kuppenheimer? Yes, there ought to be a place in football lore for Kuppenheimer. His feats are no less inspiring than the gridiron greats of old. For starters, he makes his clothes in his own factory, sells them in his own stores, and he cut out the middleman. Just so you could slip into an all-wool navy blazer for only $125, or down a 100% wool flannel suit for just $165. Some legends just seem to wear better than others, like the great Kuppenheimer. Meteorologist Kirk Mellick, exclusively on AM 750 WSB. Andre Reeson has just caught another 50-yarder. He had previously caught a 53 and a 55-yarder. He now has eight receptions for 253 yards. The fact that he's caught some big passes should be no surprise to Georgia. Coming into this ball game, he had 30 catches, and the next leading receiver for Michigan State had eight, so he's been the key man all year long. And they, they knew that he was going to be the man they, they were looking for. They have all night. He has come through an incredible performance. Eight catches, 253 yards for one man. Now Langlo will kick off. Will they kick it deep or split it? He kicks it deep. Kind of a low line drive. Caught by Worley over his shoulder. The ball took him back to the five. Worley across the field, 15, 20, 25, and went out of bounds around the 30 or 32. We're going to have 342, and that's plenty of time. Dogs have to grind it out, have to get some first downs here. 34 to 27. The question is, which defense is the most tired? Lauren? Well, on the touchdown pass, I don't know how Georgia didn't knock the ball away. If, uh, it looked like they were going for the ball, and uh, it should have been the kind of pass that you knock away, but somehow it slipped in there. But it's like we've been saying, it's all in the hands of the offense. Now, Thomas splits right. We've got two tight ends in, and Michigan State's up on that six-man line. Worley in motion. Toss sweep this time to Henderson. He turned around to run back the other way, and he got a block. 30, 35, 36. He got a block from Wayne Johnson that he had to have when he turned and went back. They were breaking and stringing the play down as we went right, and Henderson cut back, and Kurt Larson, a linebacker. Benson Donaldson, a cornerback, hit him, but the Dogs got it out to almost the 36 second down and four. Watch the clock. Hampton and Ellis are now the back. Georgia wants to drive it. 34-27. We're leading by seven. State in that sixth one again. Wayne Johnson looking at it. Long count. 
Going to give it to the tail, and we drive him in the five, ten yards. Hampton blew it up to the 45. Nine or ten big yards, just jumping in the middle with that quick speed in those legs. 2.57, the clock stops. They'll move the chain. Dog got a first down on the 45. It's 34 to 27. Hey, Phil, do you realize what kind of game we're giving Dooley on his last game? We really got... I haven't watched him jump around much, though. So what kind of game Dooley is giving us? <laughs> 34 to 27, 2.43. Clock running. Dogs in the 45 and a half. Two tight ends. I, one flanker. Again, we look at a six. One set up. Wayne Johnson now sprinting to the right with a couple of blockers. Tries to cut and run. He cut too soon. He knocked him down. He lost the yard. Came sweeping wide right. He had Hampton and he had Mullen Sadowski out there. Snow, the middle linebacker, and Travis Davis, the right tackle, broke it up. Ball back to the 44. Move clock. 215, 214, 34, 27. Georgia trying to win our ninth game of the year by the hardest, yet we had him down 24 to 7. First down here would be very helpful at this point as Georgia needs to move the football 11 yards to get that first down as they near midfield. You don't want McAllister and Ryzen to have another shot at it. Flanker goes left. Stayed again in the 6-1. On second down go to Hampton jumps in the middle he broke away to the 47 to 50 to their 44 out of bounds Hampton should have been stopped on the 47 he pulled his leg away and veered to the right Donaldson in the corner shoved him out Hampton turned a two and a half yard play into about a dozen a big big first down for Hampton who is now picked up 105 yards rushing in this football game has he carried it that much either has he no he has nine carries Ball on the 44 and a big first down. The clock is a minute 48. Henderson in now. Rodney Hampton running like a wild man. Minute and 48, 34 27. The clock stopped with that. Dog still with the two tight ends looking at the six man defensive front. Wayne, a fairly long count. Hampton, left guard, spinning, trying to pull his legs. They got him on the 41. He didn't get much there. I think he got three. Trying to run right behind Shelly Anderson at left guard. Time called with 97 seconds. State's going to call time and stop the clock. We've got a seven-point lead and still have the ball. Timeout, 60-second local break on the Bulldog Network. Some teams win every year, like the one performing for you at Mitchell Motors on Peach Tree Industrial Boulevard in Chambly. No wonder Georgia's oldest Oldsmobile dealer specializes in low prices, high trade allowances, and top service on the best in family cars, luxury cars, all models from the new generation of Oldsmobile. If picking winners is your style, Mitchell is your dealer. Join all the fans at Mitchell Motors, Peach Tree Industrial Boulevard, just inside the perimeter. Business and professional people in Georgia find Apple's Macintosh Computers today offer superior computer solutions, along with Apple's acknowledged leadership and ease of use, graphics, and economy of training. Many of Georgia's leading companies have turned to Apple's Macintosh to answer their computer needs. But whether you're a Fortune 1000 company or a small business, Apple deserves your attention. For the name of your nearest authorized Apple dealer, phone Apple at 393-9358. Call Apple, 393-9358. AM 750 WSB and Ludlow Fort, midday. Minute and 37 to go, and uh, Michigan State has called a timeout, and the uh, scoreboard shows that they have two left. However, it seems like they had a timeout earlier in this half, and uh, we were discussing that during the timeout. At any rate, we'll pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Kuppenheimer Men's Clothiers, America's number one value clothier for men, sponsors University of Georgia football on AM 750 WSB, Atlanta's news leader. Depend on it. All I can figure is maybe the timeout we thought charge to Michigan State wasn't. we got Arthur Marshall now, the only flanker left with two tight ends in on second down and seven. Wayne Johnson going to keep. Rain inside at right tackle and got two and a half more. Tough yards. Got inside the 40 to about the 37 and a half. We should be coming up with about a third down and four. That 89 seconds of clock may have been stopped again. I believe it has. State wants that ball back because they want to throw to that guy again long. 89 seconds. It'll be third and four. Timeout. 30 second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Newt Rockney, Jim Thorpe, Red Grange, Kuppenheimer. Kuppenheimer? Yes, there ought to be a place in football lore for Kuppenheimer. His feats are no less inspiring than the gridiron greats of old. For starters, he makes his clothes in his own factory, sells them in his own stores, and he cut out the middleman, just so you could slip into an all-wool navy blazer for only $125. 
or don a 100% wool flannel suit for just $165. Some legends just seem to wear better than others, like the great Kuppenheimer. One minute, 29 seconds left to go in the football game. Michigan State took the timeout, and the, uh, again, the scoreboard did not reflect it, so it looks like maybe the scoreboard is not working, and Michigan State is out of timeout, so first down now would really put this ball game on ice for the Bulldogs as Johnson walks up to the line of scrimmage. Now Hummings back at the flanker, split left, the only man split, State comes up into a 6-2. And we go to the tail, and Worley ran right over a man and might have a first down in the 32 and a half. We open up a hole at right guard, and Worley just went in there, head first and low, a big four yards, and a first down. Four and a half, almost five yards. Worley shot in there low and hard, had a little crease, first down in the 33, just inside. And the clock is 80, now it's 79 seconds. Dogs lead 34-27. State is no more timeouts. Lauren? There, there is uh, there is no timeout left for Michigan State. The official came over and told Georgia that a moment ago. La uh, Larry, he really did a good job. Wayne Johnson of eating up the clock. A couple of times he got the snap off with one. I know in one time there was only three 50, seconds left. Good job. 56, 55 seconds. We've gone into a safe thing. Wayne Johnson simply takes the ball, but we had run out of time first. We might get a penalty. Clock stopped 55 seconds. He was going to step back and take a two-yard loss. We put three backs behind him in case there was a funny handoff or a fumble, and the dogs are going to be penalized five here. Back out to the 38. But there's 55 seconds, so they'll try to just let a couple plays in the clock run down. Georgia leading 34 to 27. Wild and woolly gator ball. This fooled a lot of fans around the country. They didn't expect this kind of a game when this match was made. Dogs have one back 12 yards deep behind the line. Wayne Johnson takes it, drops back, takes a three-yard loss, and then a man comes in and cracks him. He was already down, and that's going to cause shoving now. Now they're fighting because State really pulled a dirty trick, and now they're really some shoving. I didn't see a fly drop, however. Jason Ridgeway, the left tackle, really hit him. He went back, he dropped down on one knee to take a deliberate three-yard loss, and some guy came in and just leveled him. Flagrant foul, and now let's catch the call. The officials first have to discuss it. Troy Sadowski was the man who was going to protect his quarterback after that happened, and it looked like Maul was also uh, out there uh, getting involved in it a little bit. It should have been, a, you know, just an obviously flagrant personal foul. They haven't stepped it off yet. Now he's going to pick it up and walk it down. Deliberate flagrant foul on Michigan State, and that'll bring it away down to around the 27, and the crowd likes that. Long. Well, there's been a lot of uh, talking in this game because the Georgia players are really fired up made to play tonight. Part of it has been that Michigan State has been a team that talks a lot, a lot of toning, uh, a lot of uh, pre-game conversation, even during warm-ups. They ran by and said things to the Georgia players, so I think they've really helped fire the Georgia football team up tonight. 34 to 27, 41, 40, 39 seconds. The dogs may again just let that clock run down long. They may even take another penalty. Let's see what they do. Wayne Johnson walks up to it. Now there's 30 seconds. Going to take a snap and take a loss. And he drops way back this time. Five, six-yard loss. Goes all the way back to the 35. And the dogs going to let that clock run down. Georgia has defeated Michigan State in the Gator Bowl, 34 to 27. And the ball game has ended. Wayne Johnson had a great night. Rodney Hampton had a great night. The few players that we had left are carrying Vince Cooley off the field right now. The few guys we had left on the defensive line, we shifted and substituted for him. Georgia's ninth win of the year, another bowl win, and they got Dooley up, and they won't let him down now. It's his last ride off the field. Coaches don't always like that, by the way. And Vince comes off for the final time. Georgia struck through the air early. You remember at one time we had 166 somewhere in the first half or whatever passing. Phil's got all that stuff with his magic machine. Dog's a winner, 34 to 27. I'm not sure what kind of a locker room show we're going to have because we don't know what the demands will be of television on Coach Dooley. 